look like an oil. Here's a Carillion photograph taken by Dr. J.D. Nelson at the University of Wyoming in 1979. Notice how this kind of looks like the, the spiral from the DNA or the caduceus, the spiral going around the caduceus. This is also apparently the spiral that people say uh, goes up the spine, the Ida and Pingala of the, of the uh, Kundalini energy going up the spine. If the ancient Egyptians were familiar with these materials, then the Great Pyramid may have been built to serve as a multi-purpose tool for extracting, energizing, and utilizing the Ormus elements. Great Pyramid would be sort of like a Swiss Army knife, multi-purpose tool that does all of these things. And in my lecture, in my workshop, I talk more about that. The Ark of the Covenant may have been a similar tool used to accumulate charge and utilize the Ormus. In Lost Secrets of the Sacred Ark, Lawrence Gardner describes how two of Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, were killed by the fire which leapt from the Ark, given in the Talmud as bolts as thin as threads. In other words, lightning bolts coming out from the Ark killed two of Aaron's sons. The properties of the Ormus materials that we have observed, therefore, are a stunning match for the properties of the materials that the ancient alchemists described in the first part of this presentation. Ormus researchers have extracted the Ormus elements from rock, food, water, and even from the air. See this uh, little image here, the picture? That's an Ormus air trap, traps it out of the air. A colleague in Australia uh, demonstrated that trap for me, or I videotaped him describing it and how it worked when I was there uh, last October, October of 2003. He literally was able to collect collect it out of the air and convert it into the oil using a, a special extraction process that he, he designed. Ormus may make up as much as 10% of the Earth's mass, according to one of the long-term Ormus researchers that we've talked to. I think it may be even more. We're finding new Ormus relationships and applications all of the time, but we're still very early in our exploration of all of the ramifications of Ormus. Here's the Ormus learning curve. Notice it's not even certain that we're actually on the curve somewhere. And we're over there, way over on the left. The study of the Ormus elements promises to change what we know in every scientific field, including meteorology. People have noticed that this stuff generates lightning, electricity. The atmosphere generates electricity, too. So maybe that's related. They've noticed that it can generate spontaneous winds in a closed room, ionic winds in a closed room. Astrophysics. Astrophysicists say that the, the universe has a lot of dark matter. Or many of the existing theories about the way the universe works says that there's just not enough matter out there for the universe to look the way it looks. There must be some that's invisible. Some that we can't see spectroscopically when we use X-ray telescopes and stuff like that. Well, the Ormus, in, the Ormus elements, you can't see them spectroscopically. They're spectroscopically invisible. So they may constitute a good portion of the entire universe. Quantum physics. Well, we've been talking a bit about quantum physics in this, in this little talk. Chemistry. Obviously, if there's a whole bunch of new forms of existing matter, then it's going to change the way chemistry, the way we understand chemistry. When people synthesize chlorophyll, it's a clear liquid. But everybody knows that chlorophyll is green. We can't synthesize real chlorophyll. We, we get close, but there's something in there that is a component that nobody knows what it is. And a lot of chemical components that nobody knows what they are Nobody can synthesize sugar. Nobody can synthesize chlorophyll. There's a whole lot of things that just can't be synthesized. And as soon as we figure out where the Ormus, what role Ormus plays in these, I think we're going to have, we're going to be able to synthesize a lot more of these chemicals. Medicine, well, obviously, if you can grow a new tail and grow walnuts the size of tennis balls and, and uh, oranges the size of cantaloupes, we're going to see some amazing changes in, in medicine. Psychology, parapsychology. Well, we're talking about a lot of the things that, that psychic stuff, you know, that parapsychologists look into. Geology, if this, if this is a major component of the Earth, 
then there's a whole new realm that we need to understand about how the earth works and, and why it works the way it does and all aspects of technology. If we can use this to generate electricity, to bring about levitation, all of these things are, are major technological breakthroughs. There's so many things that, so many important things that we're discovering about this stuff that if only 10% of what we have observed about Ormus proves out, Ormus will be the greatest scientific discovery in human history. It's so big. There's so many things, so many new things here that it's going to change everything. It's going to change science in every possible way. Besides the ramifications of, of knowing what the connection to spirit is. That's going to change things hugely. It's going to change the entire scientific paradigm. We're going to have to bring consciousness into it. And I cover a lot more of this part in my workshop.